Faith is what you stand on, not what you hide behind. That's our next point. Faith is what you stand on, not what you hide behind. I want to spend a little bit of time here in verse 14 and 15. It says this. <clears throat> Let me find my place. I have got all off track here. Okay. Here we go. Uh, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. You are the light of the world. We had a team meeting here this past Tuesday night and we gave uh, these little candle holder things out to everybody and had a little candle on it and, we, and it had this verse on it, that you are the light of the world. And we uh, everyone lit their candle um, because I challenged our leaders, I challenged our volunteers, and today I'm challenging you to be more bold with your faith. When they lit that candle this week, or Tuesday night, I challenged them to no longer look back, but to now look forward and say, how can I be more bold with my faith? And today I'm challenging you to do that. Because it's not what you hide behind, it's what you stand on. And you stand on your faith. You've heard that saying, stand on your faith or keep the faith. you heard that saying before. I believe that today that's exactly what God's instructing you to do. That's what God's asking you to do. Stand on your faith. Don't hide behind it. And what am I saying when I say don't hide behind it? Don't keep it so private. That's right. The enemy would have you to keep it private because guess what? If you keep it private, no one else can hear the gospel. No one else can hear and get the same change, the same exact result that God's doing in your life. And I said something last week about how many people won't celebrate your transformation. Many people will not want to hear what you got to say when you begin to share your faith. The statistic is this. I believe it's like 1% of Christians actually share their faith in their lifetime. 1% share their faith with someone else and what God's doing in their life. That's sad. And it's the reason that we live in a world where, or in Macon, four out of five people don't go to church. Why? Because we don't, we're not bold enough with our faith. And I think it's because we're scared. Like I said, we're scared that we're going to hurt somebody. But the light of the world, listen, it can't be hidden. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. You are that city on the hill. You are that light that is meant to shine to the world, to light it up in the middle of darkness. Don't we live in a dark world? Don't we live in a barren place where it looks like everything is just going crazy? Am I right? Amen. And every day it's something different. You are the light of the world. You are that flavor that's going to add to that bread. You are the salt of the earth. And God's looking for you to light up when there's darkness. Um, I love uh, seeing... Y'all know that song, Fireflies? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Oh, we got two in the house. Okay, awesome. Uh, that song, I, I don't really like the song, but I kind of like the way it goes. It's kind of a weird song. Um, but it's cool anyway, so whatever. Anyways, I like that song, but... Even more than that, I like I like fireflies. Anybody, when you was a kid, you kind of catch them, you poke the holes in the jar, and then, you, you know, y'all know the whole deal. Um, I had a habit of doing that, and I would keep them in the house, and, of course, they would die in about a day, um, even when you had holes in there. And, um, and I'd go out and catch some more and catch some more. But when I was a kid, I was afraid of the dark. Anybody in here, if you don't raise your hand, I'm not feeling alone on this. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> I was afraid of the dark as a kid. Matter of fact, I was probably afraid of the dark. I won't even say how long. I was afraid of the dark for a while. Uh, and uh, yesterday, yeah, actually, uh, no. I do keep a light on in the kitchen. Now that you said that, man, I need to work on something. Anyways, no, I, I was afraid of the dark for a very long time, and um, of course, you, you know what I had. I had to get night light. It was weird. Anyway, I, not I, not when I was older. Okay, just when I was a little boy. Okay. Just don't go tell them on me, okay? Thank you. Uh, but I would go and I would get these light, lightning bugs, and a lot of times that was my nightlight. Like, I'd keep them in the thing, and they light up every now and then. They, they go out and light up. And it would take me a little while to go to sleep because I got fascinated with these things. You know, I'd just sit there and watch these things. But in the middle of the darkness, there was this little light that I, my eyes were just drawn to. And you know when you're in a dark room and you want to get out, you're looking for some light. Am I right? And there's many people around you in their life, they're in a dark room and they're looking for just a little bit of light, just a hint of light so that they can get out. And they're looking at you because they know that Jesus is inside of you. And when you sit back and you don't say anything, there's no light in the room. 
And they're looking for it. But because we're so scared that we might hurt somebody's feelings, or it might not be good, we might hurt somebody, but we don't light up. Listen, you need to be like that lightning bug in that room. I'm going to tell you right now. And you might die out one day, but I guarantee you, it might burn out. But don't let it burn out when people need you. That's right. That's right. Because their faith may very well rest on you at that moment. They may need some of your faith to come off on them. Right. You know what I'm saying? To get them through what they're going through. That's right. Because they're running on empty. Listen, I was on my way to Florida um, just after my mom passed away. We went down to the, to the beach for a few days. Well, I would just gotten this new truck. Hadn't had it very long. And uh, Chelsea and Courtney know this story. But anyway, we are going down to the beach and... We're driving down the interstate, and you know we're talking and stuff. And I said, "Hey guys, we we gotta get some gas pretty soon." I looked on the thing; it said 30 miles till I was gonna be on it. Well, I thought, "Oh, I got 30 miles. That's cool." You know, we get to talking. Anybody been here? We get to talking, and the next thing I know, my truck starts slowing down. I was like, "Oh crap! Here we go!" And uh, I'm pressing that pedal, boy, to the floor. I was like, "I'm gonna make it to this exit," because we were literally a mile and a half from the exit. And I was like, "I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it." Courtney, pray. And then here we go, we're going. And we run out of gas. Like, we just literally run out. And I was like, I got a brand new truck, and I'm running out of gas, and I'm trying to get to the beach by a certain time. This is horrible. Anybody been there? And uh, some of y'all ran out of gas this week, right? Anybody in here? I felt sorry for you because it was hot. Uh, but there's this, there's this thing that, that, that I believe was a, a thing from God. It's called OnStar. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I thank God for OnStar. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie about it. So uh, it's got OnStar, and um, so I call and I was like, "Yes, ma'am. I don't know if you guys do this kind of thing, but um, I've run out of gas." Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Sawyer. We will be right there. And I was like, "Well, how are you doing this? You know, I want to know. I want to know the process. You know, how am I getting this gas? Is this coming from in the middle of nowhere? Like, what is this kind of thing?" And she says, "Well, we'll, we'll they'll be there in about ten minutes." And literally, in about five minutes, there's a guy, he pulls up in his pickup truck, he's got a little tank of gas and an orange vest on, and he puts this gas in my car, and I'm like, man, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Five minutes flat. And um, because OnStar has these people stationed in different places, um, they're specifically that when you run out of gas to fill you back up. And you're that person. You are that person that when somebody runs out of gas, God says, hey, hey, you, I need you to go and help fill them up a little bit. They're running on empty. Can you hurry up and get over there? I told them 10 minutes, but you really need to get over there in about five. Because if you don't, they're going to run out quick. They're going to be depressed by the time you get there. Because I was like, we got to get to the beach. It was hot. And uh, I said, Courtney, I'm just going to start walking. So I get out of the truck, and I start walking towards the exit. I'm like, I'm going to get there. I'll see you all in an hour. Anyway, then the guy comes, I was like, man, this is awesome. So that's the thing with us, is that God is, is asking us to be the people who don't hide behind our faith, but we stand upon it and we say, hey, when you need some, I got a little extra. That's right, right. And I'm here to replenish you. I'm here to pull back into you and fill your tank. Are they seeing Him? <clears throat> that's our last point. Are they seeing Him? And Matthew 5.16 says this, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in 